Hello and welcome back to a new tutorial. This week we're going to be creating these rigid bodies that kind of activate and come to life and then they return to their original position. I actually found this on Behance and was quite inspired by it so I thought I'd try to create a tutorial. Um, this guy, his name is Andrew Moskvin. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm really sorry if I butchered that but yes. So, so I found his work on Behance and I really liked it. I thought this was really cool. It's kind of spheres that kind of come to life and then they just return back to their original position. So I'm going to try and create something similar to this in Cinema 4D. So first things first, let's just create our sphere and let's change its type to hexahedron and let's turn the segments down to, let's go like 24. We hit N, B, we can see the geometry, this looks pretty good. And let's drop this into a cloner, hold Alt, drop that into a cloner. Um, and we might just need to lower our radius just a tad so just in case there is any intersecting this should be fine and then with our cloner let's up these counts to 12 by 12 by 12 and then let's zoom out and get this into frame so yeah we've got loads of spheres here which is good but you can do whatever you want you don't need to copy what i've done now that we've got a geometry we can add a bullet tag and we'll go with a rigid body Drop that on. So if we hit play, all our spheres are going to just fall. So we'll restart that and we're going to hit, we're going to change this follow position. So we're going to up this, let's go for like three. And you can see now our spheres kind of just sit there. They just dipped a little bit, but they're kind of holding their position. So that's good, that's what we want. Okay, so to kind of make them seem like they're coming to life, we could use a turbulence. So if I drop in a turbulence, we'll go up to simulate forces and let's drop in a turbulence. Let's up this as well, let's up the strength to like, let's go for like 400 and up the scale as well actually, let's go to like 150. So we hit play now, you can see this is creating a turbulence and that all, all the spheres are coming to life because they're all being affected by the turbulence. So we kind of just want a specific area to be affected. So let's restart that. And in our fields section on the turbulence, let's drop in a spherical field. Uh, I do not want this to be a child of the turbulence. I'm gonna drop this off. And you can see we've got the spherical field in the center. And I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. And then I'm gonna bring it out to the edge so we can just see it's like right on the edge here, about here. Now I'm gonna make this inner circle a bit bigger as well. And now if I play, you can see only this specific area is being affected by that turbulence. So effectively now all we need to do is animate this spherical field moving around our cube of spheres. Now you can do that in whatever way you want. You can either hand animate it or you could drop a, uh, if you go into animation tags there is this vibrate tag. You could drop that on there and create some uh, random movement. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go with a null object. So I'm going to drop a null which will be in the center of the world and then I'm going to make that be the parent of my spherical field. So you can see now when I rotate this null it's going to move my spherical field around the object. So that's good, that's what we want. I might just manually animate the null to, to rotate around. So I'm going to hit a keyframe here and here. I'm going to move forward to, let's go like 64. Let's move it up around here. This looks quite good. I'm going to, I'm going to extend my timeline as well. Let's go 120 and then let's go to the end. And then I'm going to bring it back around and then down. Or maybe we could go up. Yeah, let's finish up top. So let's try that. Let's hit play. It is working. It just needs an extra kind of push maybe from the turbulence. So let's see. Let's, let's frame this a little bit better. And let's go back into our turbulence. And we could up the strength. We could go for something really strong. We could go maybe like 4,000 instead. And then we hit play. And you can see now they're all really moving away from their original position, coming to life, and then they return once they've left the area of the spherical field. 
So upping this follow position kind of makes them hold their position a lot more. So you even might need to turn the turbulence up even further or just keep tweaking it until you have the look that you're going for. You can play around with this linear or angular damping. Uh, if you turn this up, you can see it's gonna make it a lot stronger and like, yeah, at the moment they're just not moving. So you could even turn that off. It just means there's gonna be no damping in the, uh, in the simulation. But I think having some probably is not a bad idea. So I'm gonna put those at 10 and I'm gonna turn the follow position to four. I think that's what I wanna go for. And I'm gonna change this mass to custom density. I'm gonna go for something like 30. So it's looking okay so far. We could add some more things to it. I might even drop in friction. So I'm gonna go forces, friction. I'm gonna up this friction. Hopefully it helps just smooth out things a little bit better. Now I might even make the spherical a little bit bigger. Yeah, this looks cool. Kind of looks like something's being dragged through. If I was to actually, if we hit uh, geometry only on playback, we kind of get a feel for how it's actually going to look once we render things out. Now to make this stand out even more, we could affect the material as well. So we could drop in a material. We could open this up and we could open up a, we could add a vertex attribute but we don't have a vertex set up just yet. So on our cloner, we could right click other tags, vertex map, and we could drop our spherical field into that vertex map. So now when we hit play, you can see it's activating on the parts that our spherical field passes through. So we could use this to drive our material. So we could go in here, we could drop it on our vertex map into attribute name, and then we could drop in a color mix and we could hook this up to the mix amount. So now we could pick our color. So input one is going to be the red parts. So that means a value of zero. So we could change this to be, I'll go for my blue color that I always use. Around here, a bit tad stronger. Something like this, is, yeah, this would be fine. And then for our opposite color, which will be the yellow when you see it passing through these parts, We'll go for uh, we'll go for the orange that I normally use as well. Now we can hook this up to our base color, and we need to add some lights into the scene. So I'm gonna let's actually frame up our camera. So I'm gonna add a focal length of uh, let's go 80, and then I'm gonna move away and let's kind of just frame this up a little bit. Something like this isn't too bad. And let's also add some lights in. So I'm gonna come out of my camera. I'm gonna make sure I'm framed. I'm gonna hit my clone and hit S, which will frame it up. So we can get out of being so close to that. Um, and back into our lights, let's drop in an area light. I'll hold shift and drop that in my folder. And I'm gonna move this out. And I'm also gonna add a animation tag, target tag on top of my area like so whatever i add in this target object my lights will point to so i'm going to hit my eyedropper and select the light tracker so my light tracker is in the center of the scene so my light will always point to the center i'm going to make this bit bigger and move it further away and move it up as a bit as well okay let's drop in a render view and yeah we've got this light coming in from the right side, which looks nice. And then maybe we could even add a, a dome light. I'm gonna turn it off in the viewport. But yeah, this this looks pretty nice. Got a nice setup here. So I'm gonna just minimize that for now. And what we can do is drop our material onto our cloner. So we can make them blue. And then let's open back up the render viewer. Let's hit progressive rendering. And yeah, we can see this looks really nice, looks quite playful. I'll hit play. I mean, it's gonna lag quite a lot, so I'll just kind of go through a couple of frames, but you can see it's updating, it's moving through the, uh, the spheres and kind of giving them some life. I'm gonna have a look at what I could do with the material. Maybe I could give it some transmission, see what that looks like. Maybe even up the dispersion, that looks quite cool. Yeah, I like that. 
like that a lot. I might even make this even bigger and kind of bring in that inner circle to be closer to the edge. So you could play now and you see it's like a lot more of them are being affected, but I quite like it, it looks cool. Changing the inside the bullet tag, that follow position, if you do lower that, you'll see they're gonna be taking a little bit longer to return to their original position, but the ones that are moving, they're a little bit more free to move. So that's kind of it. This follow position is quite a powerful tool. It's quite handy to, all you need to be doing is tweaking these values to find the look you're going for, playing around with the mass, just kind of depends what the, what you want these uh, spheres to be acting as. Mine are kind of mimicking uh, like plastic balls that you'd find in a ball pit. They feel quite light and reactive, bouncing off of each other a little bit. So yeah, it's really just down to you to uh, refine the parameters to suit the look you're going for. Now I decided to go ahead and tweak my material and stuff a little bit more. So in my vertex map, I actually added this decay field after my spherical field. So what that's doing is once I turn the effect strength up, it's kind of going to leave a trail uh, of where our spherical field has passed through. So once I hook that up into my material, so out of that vertex map that I've set up, pass that into the transmission weight. So it's kind of leaving a trail of transmissive spheres that are slowly fading back to blue. You can see here this one's like fading back slowly. So this is what I came up with after tweaking the parameters and the material to get the look I was going for. But anyway, that is it for this week's tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to drop a like if you learned something new and I hope to see you in next week's video. Thank you. Hey.